Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate... No. Actually, not Ultimate Emerald Dreadnoughts, Transport Fever 2. Yeah, close enough. Welcome back to Transport Fever 2. We're currently on the Mirror train line, and this train line has actually made a lot more money than I was expecting. In the previous episode, I set this thing up, and this line actually has been doing very well, surprisingly. I thought that the uh, the ICE, or the, I, uh, the ICE, whatever you want to call it, the Intercity Express, was not going to be profitable on this particular route, because it is an expensive train, both to buy and then to run. But, look at this. The Murrah train line has made me 3.2 million in the last year. And, of course, the towns have been growing, which is a big help. I've had to double the tracks, so that there are now two of these behemoths running around. And uh, much to my surprise, people are not only finding the line, but also very much using it. All the way into Shreveport. That's where the end uh, of the line is. It does look like we need a few more buses over here, uh, interestingly. Because I thought that we'd be able to do this with the two of them, but no. There are still 58 people waiting over there. Now this is kind of where we left off in the previous episode, connecting Shreveport and further on the southeastern part of the map. We still got Minneapolis, Fort Worth, Roseville, Beaumont, Houston, uh, Lafayette, Sunnyvale, I think it's El Paso, yeah, El Paso's connected. Oh, Sunnyvale's also connected, yes, that's where my bus stops. The Mysore Papala bus line. Now, that bus line could be expanded, but it would be... No, actually it can't. It can't get all the way to where I needed to go. Considering that this is both lake... Uh, sorry, not lake-based, water-based, I can probably just connect Sunnyvale to Lafayette through means of a hovercraft. And since they already have a, well, a fairly decent position for a port, let's go with that. Let's spin this around. It's just going to be the uh, trusty old hovercraft again. Because they seem to be more than sufficient to needs. A bus over there and here. I think that covers most of it. Yep. Alright. Starting here, there, there, and back. Very easy. This is the Williams bus line. Bus line. I will try to, once again, do a little bit more cinematic stuff, because I have not really gotten around to that in the previous episode, because I did a lot of building. Alright, we're going to flatten the place here, making sure that there is a bit of room for the hovercraft to maneuver. Smoothen that out, otherwise it's going to look pretty bad. Yeah, I was afraid of that. It's not going to allow me to do it that easily. Fortunately, this road doesn't really lead to anywhere critical, so I should be able to safely remove it. Smoothen it out. And we're going to go to Sunnyvale. Um, here, in this little end route, this is where I'm going to put the harbor. There, connected. Just make sure that they have a bus stop to drop people off. And that's going to be the Mysore Papala line. Which stops at... Oh, it's just there. Okay. Next. Get another bus stop installed over there. And then add that as well. There we go. Okay then. This should be doable by hovercraft pretty quick. Unless the thing manages to ground itself somewhere, but hopefully it doesn't. Let me see, who is up next? Uh, the car hovercraft. Put down a shipyard. What do you mean collision? There we go. Considering the populace of both places, for now I'm going to start with two hovercraft. Right, so that is Lafayette connected. I'm not sure if people want to get from Lafayette to Beaumont. Maybe. But for now, I'm not going to connect them. Because the distance there is pretty serious. 
and I would have to probably excavate a bit more of the terrain here to allow for another hovercraft connection all the way to Beaumont. Instead, I'm going to tie these things together, uh, potentially Augusta, because Augusta was going to be a hub. Uh, sorry, no, not Augusta. Ann Arbor was going to be a hub. I have train, train tracks already in position to get to Roseville and Atlanta. Fort Worth? Hmm... I think from Roseville. So let's build a train station on the edge over here and connect that and make sure it is possible to transfer from a bus to a train to a ferry. There is not that much property here. So instead of just lowering it, I'm going to make a bit more. Uh, level it. This is where their train station is going to be. Now we're going to smoothen it a bit, give them their beach back. There we go. So, let's say that this thing is going to sit here like so. Except I think standard passenger station might be more convenient to place. Let's make it a 240, because this could be a fairly important hub. Immediately going to double up the tracks, make it easy to run two lines there. And we're going to go to Ann Arbor, which is over there. Move on. Yeah, easy. Almost a straight line, which should allow trains that run here to go at best speed. Split it up here. Pick the right side. Did I? I did. Okay, good. Parallel tracks. And from here. A bit more. Somebody was asking me in the comments of the previous video, hey, can you make them a bit more artistic, if you will? Um... That is not really my forte. I'm much more used to making things efficient, making sure that stuff runs at efficiency, so at uh, a nice profit, rather than make them look uh, good slash beautiful. That is something I pretty much suck at. So unfortunately, I'm afraid I can't really help you there, but Colonel Failure might, because he is much, much better at that than I am. to the station. Give me a straight line. Like so. And then there. Okay, this train station is going to need some adjustments. Because we're also going to need a passenger building on the other side of it. So there will have to be a platform. Oh, that's the wrong platform. Passenger platform here and here and here. I'm going to go with a large side passenger building. connect it. It's a bit weird that you still need a road over there, but that's just the way that the game is set up. Okay, and then over here, I want to have a bus slash tram station. Oh crap, it doesn't connect, of course. Yeah, that's annoying. Whereas if I connect this street to here, it might. No, it still doesn't. Ah. Okay, fine. We're going to adjust this a little. Removing this part of the platform. And then taking a street right through there. This thing needs to get rid of its extending piece of track. There we go, now it's connected. Good. Okay, from there, 
the Ann Arbor, sorry, no, Roseville. It's not Ann Arbor, it's Roseville. Ann Arbor's over there. We can now set up a new line. Starting here. Going here. And they immediately split themselves out. Good. Uh, this is the one game gamer, and it's supposedly in caps lock. Uh, passenger line. Let's just say train line. If I did everything correctly on the other side of the tracks, this depot should still be serviceable. And I think for now, having a Mirage run around here should be fine. Just gotta make sure that the piece, the, the passengers, the passengers are being collected over here. One, two, three. As you might have seen, I am not using trams in this particular season. Simply because they're... Well, they can be a bit of a nuisance. You need to do quite a bit of upgrading. And this, so far, is generally a little easier. There we go. Okay. Um, Kyrus boss line. With a road depot sitting right next to it. Say two buses, Kira's bus line. Right, shipping. We can go from there. We just cannot get to Fort Worth yet because they don't have a dock. Same for Minneapolis. I'm thinking of going with a route that goes one, two, three and back, and one, two, three and back. This way I'm connecting both of the towns. So it is time to do some digging. I'm gonna flatten this place. Maybe I can make it a canal. Like a channel leading towards the town and then leading away from it. And just have this little beachfront property here. Let's see if that's doable. I would, however, need to fit a harbor in here somewhere. Um, it has to be a passenger harbor with two docks. Outside of navigable waters, crap. Give me the navigable waters overlay, please. Yeah, it needs to be a bit wider. That might be a little too wide. Just moving it out a little. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. That's better. There. Turn that overlay off. Set up the bus stop. Uh, no, sorry. The, whoops. My bad. Was that your house? No, it wasn't. Uh, we need a medium street here first. And then I can set up my tram slash bus stop. Here. Minneapolis. Current population 290. 290. One, two, three. That ought to do it. Start. One, two, two, three. Done. Um, who do we have next? The Jan Elfs, or Jan Elfs probably. Plus line. Right now, not terribly interesting over there because all you can do is just get around town with these uh, Burkhoff buses. For the moment, that's fine. We're preparing for grander things here to get to Fort Worth, for example. Um, yeah, here. This is fine. And then a bus stop here, here, and here. One, two, three. Done. This is the Enigma Han bus line. And again, two Burkhoffs. There. All right. Um, this dock, I will need to adjust a little bit because I placed only one dock, not two. Or one landing, sorry. So two small passenger docks 
with landings there and there. Right, one is going to be Roseville, uh, Fort Worth, and then here. Oh, they don't take quite take the canal, but whatever. As long as it works, I'm fine. This is the Merkel hovercraft. Auto save kicking in again. Go on. Thank you. And the second one going in opposite direction. Roseville, Minneapolis, Fort Worth. And that one is the SKL-1 hovercraft. A couple of new vehicles. Uh, I suppose I can make the shipyard over here. As long as I spin it right way around. There. Now with the passengers that we have on various different towns, I want to go with hovercraft, particularly because they're fast. And I want to have at least three per line. There. And they'll start spreading themselves out a little bit at a time. They just seem to phase right through each other. It's going to take a little bit of time for these things to spin up. The Burkhoffs are already roving about town. And we got our first passengers getting either picked up or dropped off here. Let's see what they do. Oh, they're getting picked up. Okay. Minneapolis port covers about half the town. And the passengers, at least in Minneapolis, are starting to get to the bus stops. Fort Worth already has one passenger for the SKL-1, which is, fortunately for him, inbound. Uh, Merkel, not so much. No passengers yet. Zips in, picks up, and gets out. Why on earth are both of you on the same terminal? I built these docks so you guys don't have to be on the same terminal. See, like that. Exactly like that. Train 11. Zero passengers as of yet, but here we go. That's half a train full of passengers. And over here... Uh, just a few. But look at the amount of passengers that are waiting on the Mura train line. Interesting. Okay, so that now connected Fort Worth, Fort Worth Minneapolis, Roseville. Uh, leaving Houston, Beaumont, and Atlanta. Lafayette is getting connected. The Coral Hovercraft is already making some money. In fact, it might not even have enough capacity. Lafayette starting at 290, currently 357. Hovercraft inbound with 16 out of 20 people. There's another 11 waiting, so this is fine for now. Comes into dock, slides into first place, and drops off a bunch of passengers. Okay, which line would be interesting to follow along with? Because the Sunnyvale to El Paso bus is not terribly spectacular. Uh, give me replacements for all of these, please. This. And then a couple more. Seems to be a little busy on that road. Over here, maybe... Yeah, maybe, along follow, bleh, maybe follow along with a hovercraft. Ship 26, the SKL-1 hovercraft. Yeah, why not? Let's see how that canal looks up close. Is it smooth? Yeah, it's fairly smooth. Here we go. Overcrafting along. I think we used to have a hovercraft that was a ferry service between... I'm not sure if it was the Netherlands and England, or if it was between France and England. But those things were very, very quick. And they were a joy to be on. Actually, no, it might not have been one of those. It might have been... Uh, what was it? I think it was a hydrofoil. I remember being on one of those hydrofoils going to England with, uh, I think it was a, a school trip. Those things were amazingly fast. Not great to be in when it was stormy, apparently. 
Because as my geography teacher once told me, he was on a trip, because that was the trip that he always went on with students. And um, at some point they were on the hydrofoil. I th well, I think it was the hydrofoil because it's a, it's a fairly small vehicle. A hydrofoil, for those of you not familiar, is a boat that has a sort of sail sitting underneath it. And simply by being at a certain speed, the hull gets pushed out of the water. And because of that, it gets a little bit more lift, so less contact with the water. And as such, you generate a lot more speed with less energy. Actually, no, I'm going to change the story again. It was not a hovercraft, it was not a hydrofoil, it was a catamaran. It was a dual hull craft, and um, that thing did not like storms. That's what we were on. I'm sorry, it's been... When was that? 2002, I think it was, or 2003 that it was there. So that's 18 years ago current. Anyway, he had this, uh, this story that the hover... No, that the catamaran was actually sort of refusing to sail because the weather was too bad and um, well they convinced them to go anyway because they had a whole bunch of school children or high schoolers that needed to go back home because well they were expected to be home so eventually the thing did make the crossing in fairly terrible weather and at some point they heard this terrible noise of all sorts of metal plates and stuff falling on the deck and the ship was uh, listing and, and bobbing and weaving quite a lot. And because of that, all the aluminum or aluminium plates from the onboard snack bar had come off their shelves. So it was this huge amount of noise. <laughs> and that must have caused quite a racket. I think nobody got hurt, um, except maybe in their ego because they got seasick. But aside from that, uh, they did make it home safely. Now, considering that we're on the SKL-1 line, we can see the Merkel hovercraft line on the opposite direction over there. And weather looks to be pretty good. Skybox is good. Oh, there's an aircraft coming up there. It's probably a fuel line. My aerial fuel transporter. And over here... It seems pretty busy on this dock. Yeah, just cut half of the dock off, why don't you? These are all passengers for the SKL-1. And the Merkel doesn't have that many. Okay, dropped off. Picking up some more folks. And spinning around, and we're off. So that was Fort Worth. Coming out of Minneapolis to Fort Worth. And now we're going to head back to the north. Maneuvering slowly. Be careful with that fan, lest you blow your other passengers right back into the water. Looks like we got potentially another Merkel coming in. Counteracting course. And you can already see the buildings far up in the distance. That's the buildings of... Yeah, Roseville. That's where we're going. In Transport Fever 2, as much as in Transport Fever 1, I do really enjoy building these sort of terminals where you have a junction between various modes of transport available. In this case, it's a bus slash train slash water line. And that water can be, of course, whatever you want it to be. Anything from a small craft, like a hovercraft, all the way up to an aircraft carrier, provided that you have the right mods. Mods that I'm currently using are linked down below. And um, actually, I might... Yeah, I might throw down an aircraft carrier here. Not so much as a transport, but as an artistic piece, because you can have them as a sort of, I don't know, terrain feature, if you will. That could make this a lot more interesting. Let's see. Oh, we got the East Citeros, good. Um, I can add, see, they, they can add them like buildings, ship assets. I could add a cruise liner. Yeah, the Celia line. I could just have that over there if I want to. Like it is visiting this place. Uh, similar as a uh, special chief, such as a, what's that, some sort of work boat? It's not a rescue boat, it seems. Maybe some sort of Coast Guard vehicle. 
US Navy. There's <laughs> the Arleigh Burke. And we can just have that. We can have that guarding the dock. And these are free, I think. So if we go back to the hovercraft. There it is. All of a sudden, there's an Arleigh Burke class destroyer guarding the dock. These things are not great as passenger transports, but they do seem to be pretty nice as just artistical features of the terrain. Anyway, I hope that these cinematic segments are much more to your liking, because previously I have been uh, skirting my duties a little bit, and I should have added more of these. Docking is not something that this goes particularly smoothly here. What is happening? Why are you folks so slow? You see that? That docking takes forever. Two thir uh, yeah, 325. 289. This one's already making a profit. That one's already definitely making a profit. Right, what other uh, shifts do we have? What other vessels? Uses Nimitz Beta. As one does. And then we're gonna have another Burke class destroyer. Let's say the carrier fleet's operating in very close formation here. They might be scared of uh, pirate attacks coming out of Roseville. You never know what these hovercrafts are actually carrying. So they have decided to make a pretty forward deployment with their actual ships over here. The destroyers. I can configure these. Oh, right. You can configure them to being a different ship class. What else can we have here? Concept ships. Ooh, what are you then? What is that? Triple barrels, Sam's all over the place, a VLS in front of it. Helicopter deck, there's more VLS on the stern. Okay. Well, that's the air defense. Uh, <laughs> that's their Aegis cruiser. And maybe because these this aircraft carrier is going to need a bit of help. Like, trying to get into dock. There. Just look at the huge size discrepancy between these things. <laughs> Alright, what other playful things can we do? Uh, we can set up some container ships. I am a bit hesitant to put these right in here because they might interfere with the path that the ships will take. But we could have them sort of on approach here. One over there, and there is a, uh, a ferry on the route here. I'm not sure where it's going. We have various yachts as they're making their way in and out of this harbor. Segelboot. The Ruderboot. There's another yacht. So you can spruce the place up like this. Now it actually looks a little bit more alive. Ship here at anchor. Maybe use their little dinghy to go on uh, onto the beach. Do some groceries in town and come back. Make it up whatever story you will. Right. As for actual business and transport. How much more can I connect here? Let's see, does this one use the other line? Yeah, this one actually does make the loop that I wanted to. The other one does not. For some reason. Anyway, Bowman still needs to be connected, Houston and Atlanta and Oceanside. I think that is all of it. So that's going to be happening in the next episode. For now, I hope you enjoy I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments if you have enjoyed it, um, particularly the more let's say uh, cinematic transit, then please let me know. That way I know to do more of it. Next episode, connecting the last of the towns. And then probably another one episode after that for a total of 10 episodes this season. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you soon for more.